When you think of powerhouses in the House of Commons, Pierre Poilievre immediately comes to mind. But additionally, there's people like Andrew Scheer and Melissa Lantzman, and there's many others. I mean, almost the entire bench of the Conservative Party of Canada is stacked with powerhouses. But today we're going to be focusing on Andrew Scheer and Melissa Lantzman, who hold back no punches. There is so much ammunition that the Conservatives have to aim towards Justin Trudeau, metaphorically speaking, with all of his scandals, the arrive scam, the RCMP cover up into the Winnipeg lab investigation that was happening and the list goes on. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I really want to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers. Once we, once we reach that threshold, we actually get pushed out further. The algorithm likes to favor those who reach that milestone. So if you don't want to subscribe for me, do it because the government doesn't want you to. We're already beating CPAC, our federally broadcasted, you know, uh, television programming it's literally on tv for crying out loud ctv or subsidized media like cbc we're surpassing them in views collectively so we're doing a fantastic job and that is all thanks to you guys the viewers and the community and without further ado sit back relax and i hope you enjoy this clip of andrew sheer and melissa lanceman just obliterating justin trudeau's minions Member from Regina Capel. Well, common sense conservatives will axe the tax, build the home, fix the budget, and stop the crime. This NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost. And he's going to make everything more expensive on April 1st with another carbon tax hike, and the effects on Canadians are devastating. A new report from GoFundMe says that Canadians started 200,000 online charity drives to help raise money just to cover day to day expenses. Instead of forcing Canadians to ask for help from online crowdsourcing campaigns, why doesn't the Prime Minister do the obvious thing? Cancel his carbon tax hike and stop making things more expensive. Yeah. The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, last year was the hottest year on record in the planet. And the Conservative leader... we got to up our taxes to fix that, don't we? ...to deny climate change. Meanwhile, with our carbon rebate, we are putting money back into the pockets of Canadian families. Are they going to vote against $1,200 for Ontario families, $1,800 for Alberta families, $1,200 for Manitoba families? That doesn't sound like common sense to me, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. We're going to axe the tax and leave the money in Canadians' pockets in the first place. And Canadians are fooled oh boy. by the shell game. They know the rebate doesn't cover all the costs of the carbon tax as manufacturers and producers raise their prices to pay their share of the carbon tax. And all that gets passed on to consumers. But you know, Sites like GoFundMe used to be used to help children who lost their parents tragically. And now Canadians are turning to crowdsourcing to help pay their food bills. Officials say that 56,000 campaigns were started just to pay for the cost of food alone. Why doesn't the Prime Minister just axe the tax so prices can come down? Before the uh, Honourable uh, President of the Treasury Board gets up to respond to that question, I'm going to encourage all members, please, on both sides of the House, to please uh, allow the person who is asking the question to ask it in, uninterrupted and now allow the person to answer the question uninterrupted. The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, the difference between that side of the House and this side of the House is that we don't deny the existence of climate change and we want to protect it for generations to come. So I have again a question. Are you going to take money away from Canadian families, Mr. Speaker, by voting against $1,200 for Ontario families, $1,800 for Alberta families, $1,200 for Manitoba families? Mr. Speaker, that's taking money and voting against that's not common sense that's just a load of crap man first of all no one's really denying climate change we understand that the, the weather is super janky right now and it has been for years this is a natural cycle that's happening in the world is it expedited because of humans i don't know i'm not smart enough to answer that question are taxes gonna fix it no 
Who in their right mind is just going to throw, what are you going to do? Build a weather machine and, and just throw loonies and toonies into the atmosphere and hope that it fixes it? There's no actual plan to fix the weather. That's what Canadians are pissed off with, especially when costs are at an all-time high. No one cares about trying to fix the weather, fix the climate with an increase in taxes. You should be, you should be focused on affordability right now. That's what people are pissed about. It's just so disingenuous, and these people are absolutely delusional. I'm going to ask the Honourable Member from St. Albert's, uh, Edmonton, please. And uh, to all members, it's really important that we do listen to the question. It's hard for the Speaker uh, to, to understand. I understand perhaps that the President of the Treasury Board uh, uh, was referring uh, to the Speaker. I hope the comments do fall through the Speaker, of course. Uh, the Honourable Member from Thornhill. After eight years of this Liberal NDP government, carbon taxes are driving up the cost of food. People are literally turning to dumpsters because they can't afford groceries. A report from the Toronto Star says dumpster diving is a new trend. So here's what you won't read in the Star. Conservatives will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget and stop the crime. What does the Toronto Star have to write in order for this radical environment minister to show some compassion and stop the 23 percent April 1st tax hike for all Canadians. The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, as I said, on this side of the House, we'll continue to fight climate change while putting money back into the pockets of Canadian families. As I mentioned, that means we're going to be providing rebates to Canadians, money back in their pockets, which the Conservatives are going to vote against. So I ask you, Mr. Speaker, through you to the opposition, when are they going to stop cutting supports to Canadians and pay attention to the most vulnerable? in this country. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, the radical environment minister who couldn't sell his own carbon tax, which the Prime Minister had to rebrand, won't even get up and answer the question. How is he going to rebrand dumpster diving? This is the minister who wants to ban cars, ban roads, ban Canadian energy, ban straws and ban stoves and tells Canadians that they have it better. We all know that after eight years, this tired government and the environment minister are out of control. But will someone over there stand up for struggling Canadians and let him walk back his carbon tax hike like he has to do with everything else. Melissa dropping the bomb. Order. Oh, what kind of power tripping is the House Speaker going to do now? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we'll be standing up for Canadians. Every single member is willing to stand on this side, Mr. Speaker. And whilst the Conservative would like to make a story, just look at our records, Mr. Speaker. When it comes, just look at our just records. Look at our records. They're not too good. We have led the industrial revolution in electric cars, Mr. Speaker. We have brought more investment. <laughs> He's bragging about failing. I hate to interrupt a member uh, in, while they have the floor, but it is important for the chair to ask all members to allow uh, members to please have that opportunity. I'll ask. Uh, there are some members whose voices carry. Uh, they know who they are. I ask them to please keep their voices down so I could allow the honourable member to finish this question with 15 seconds left on the clock. 15 seconds. Speaker, I'd like to remind Canadians, Canadians know that on this side of the house, we believe you can fight climate change and have a prosperous future for our children, Mr. Speaker. We brought Stellantis in this country. We brought Volkswagen in this country. We brought Norval in this country. Mr. Speaker, we have created jobs for the next generation, fight climate change, and ensure Canada will lead in the 21st century. 